Okay, so how much do you actually understand about square roots? Well, I suspect a lot of you uh, think you understand square roots actually better than you do. So let's take a look at this simple problem right here. We have the square root of 4. What is this equal to? Now, a lot of you are saying, come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is so easy. I know the exact right answer. Well, we need to be very careful here because even if you get the answer right, uh, I don't think you really understand why you answered it the way you did. Now, hopefully, I'm piquing your curiosity, but uh, let's take a look at these uh, multiple choice uh, options here for the answer to the square root of 4. So the square root of 4 is equal to what? And put your calculator away, by the way, as well. So is it equal to uh, A, 2, B, negative 2, C, positive and negative 2, or D, it depends on the situation? Well, uh, this little video is probably going to uh, increase your knowledge about square roots because most of you probably don't understand the subtleties that are going on when we are taking the square root of numbers. This is a very important little video, especially for those of you out there that plan on studying algebra. All right, so if you have the answer, put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to fully explain what's going on with the square root of 4. All right, but uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so it seems like a pretty straightforward question. And uh, again, a lot of you probably looking like this. Come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Uh, this is so easy. Of course, I know the right answer. Well, uh, as I indicated, even if you get this right, I suspect that you don't understand why you made the selection that you did. But uh, let's go and take a look at this answer and let me get into what I'm talking about here. So the correct answer is two, which of course is option A. All right, now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face and a plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence for understanding what the square root of 4 is equal to. But I'm really not quite sure you totally understand why the answer is uh, 2. Because if we think about it, the square root of a number is what? Well, the square root of 4, we're looking for a number such that we multiply it by itself, gets back to 4. All right, so 2 times 2 is indeed a positive 4, but why isn't the answer negative 2? All right, because negative 2 times negative 2 is also a positive 4. Now, some of you out there, it may be answered with both positive and negative 2, and you're like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, that's what I did. Why, am, uh, why is my answer wrong and this answer uh, is right? Well, uh, this is a topic that is very confused in mathematics. Matter of fact, let's get into this right now. All right, so if uh, indeed you said, well, the answer is 2, very good, but uh, most people don't understand why they're um, answering with the positive version of the square root of a number, okay? That is correct, okay? But why isn't, again, uh, both it's uh, both not the positive and negative versions because the square root of 4, we're looking for something times itself to get us back to 4. So 2 times 2 gets us back to 4, but so does negative 2 times negative 2. And a lot of you who've uh, actually studied some algebra uh, are probably used to writing uh, things like the square root of 4 equal to positive and negative 2. So again, you might be very confused. You might be like, all right, now I'm totally confused, Mr. Uzi, math man. What is going on here? Well, let's get into this right now. This is very, very important. And uh, if you don't understand this, this can really uh, cause you problems in algebra. Matter of fact, we're going to take a look at two specific situations where we need to understand uh, the square root of 4. Now, it's not just the square root of uh, specifically 4. It's just the square root of a positive real number. All right, so what is the main topic here? Well, the main topic that we're really uh, talking about is something called the principal square root. Okay, now this uh, topic here, or this name, principal square root, uh, quite honestly, uh, it's not, um, I don't see a lot of math textbooks stress this enough. 
So if you don't really uh, understand what the principal square root, matter of fact, some of you are like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I never even study this. Well, uh, again, don't feel too bad because I don't think this is uh, stressed quite enough. Now, if you took a math class or you had a math teacher or you had a math book that uh, really understood or really explained this, then that is fantastic. But uh, let me go ahead and tell you what the principal square root is. And I'm just going to give you kind of... A real simple language to kind of understand that the principal square root is, a principal square root of a number is just the positive uh, root of that number. So the square root of four is a positive two. All right, this is the principal square root. So we're never going to have a negative number. In other words, we're not going to have positive and negative. All right, so if you come across a problem, let's say on some math quiz, and uh, the question is, hey, what is the square root of 16? You want to answer positive four. Okay, so when you are taking the square root of a number, you always take the principal square root, only the positive version. But there is a time where we do uh, use the positive and negative version of a square root. Okay, I'll explain that in a second, but let's talk about why the principal square root is very important. So I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, two algebra equations. Here is the first. So we have 1 over the square root of x is equal to 1 half. All right, now, even if you don't know how to solve uh, this type of algebra equation, this is what we call a radical equation because this little symbol right here, uh, this square root symbol is also called a radical. But effectively, what we can do here is cross multiply okay, because this is what we call a proportion. But again, even if you don't know how to solve this, I'm going to show you. So uh, we have the square root of x is equal to, or uh, 1 over the square root of x is equal to 1 half. I can just simply take this right here and multiply by 1. So the square root of x times 1 is the square root of x, and then I can cross multiply this way. 1 times 2 is 2. All right, so all we're doing is taking the equation in uh, this form and writing it this way. All right, so we have the square root of x is equal to 2. So what is this saying? The square root of what number is equal to 2? Well, we're not quite done yet solving the equation because what we need to do is square both sides. So when you are solving a radical or square root equation, we need to get rid of the square root. And the way we do that is square uh, the square root, okay, because we're looking to solve for x. But if we square the left-hand side of the equation, we also have to square the right-hand side of the equation. So the square root of x squared is x. All right, so that's what we're looking for. And then 2 squared is 4. All right, so 4 is our solution. Now, in this type of equation, when you're solving radical equations and you, radical equations and you square both sides, uh, you have to check your solution into the original equation. Now, I can kind of go off on a tangent here, but I don't want to really uh, make this video any longer than we need to because we need to check for something called extraneous solutions. So let's go ahead and take our answer here, x is equal to 4, and check it into the original equation and see if indeed this is true. All right, so if x is equal to 4, that means when I plug in 4 for this x, I'm going to get a true statement, right? All right, so we have 1 over the square root of x, but x is uh, 4. So let's check this. We have 1 over the square root of 4, right? We're going we're to replace that x with the 4. Now, here is really what we kind of uh, led up to. Now, what is this right here? The denominator is a positive 2. So take a look at this square root of 4. We have the square root of 4. Now, uh, the answer here, okay, is the principal square root. It's 2. So this 1 over the square root of 4 is the same thing as 1 half, and 1 half is equal to 1 half. So 4, indeed, is a good solution. But let's suppose someone said, all right, the square root of 4 is equal to both positive and negative 2. That means it's both positive and negative. So here, when we take the square root of 4, someone could have uh, 1 over uh, uh, negative 2. Okay, so uh, when they're taking the square root of 4, it, you have both the positive version and the negative version. You can see 1 over negative 2 is not equal to 1 over 2. Okay, these are uh, different signs. So um, this is what we call an extraneous solution. But when you are checking solutions in uh, checking for extraneous solutions, you need to only use the positive, or sorry, the principal square root of a number. This is a very, very confused part of um, algebra for a lot of students because they understand how to solve 
let's say, for example, radical equations or square root equations, and even understand the concept of extraneous roots. But when they go and plug in solutions into their equation, they're not taking the principal square root to check uh, 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 their solutions, okay? All right, so hopefully you learned something here. You're like, wow, Mr. YouTube Math Man, maybe I didn't really know, uh, understand square roots as uh, well as I thought. No big deal, but there is a role for positive and negative uh, roots of a number. So the square root of four can be positive or negative, but when? Well, let's go ahead and take that next step and check that out. But first, I need you to check this out, which is an invitation to support this channel. Now, what is this channel all about? Well, it's all about helping people learn mathematics. Obviously, uh, you know, it is a math channel. And uh, the number one thing that really, um, I think, uh, you know, frustrates people in mathematics is the way it's kind of taught, okay? Unfortunately, math is a technical subject, but if it's taught in a very technical way, obviously it can be confusing. So what you want to do is find a uh, teacher or somebody to explain things in the way you like and understand. But the real kind of um, main idea when you are trying to learn mathematics is not to take shortcuts, right? Some people, you know, they want to go fast. And when you try to go too fast learning anything, you're going to miss a ton of stuff. And uh, then that's obviously going to cause errors. So the way I like to teach math is to really take one problem and explain it really in depth in a very kind of easy to way. Uh, to understand, but, you know, uh, in a very comprehensive manner. So if you need um, additional help in algebra or mathematics uh, beyond this little video, check out my full main uh, math courses. I'm going to leave links to those in the description of this video. Also, I have a ton of content on my YouTube channel, and I'm posting all the time, so make sure to hit that notification bell as well. All right, so let's get back to uh, when we need to use this positive and negative um, root of a square root of a number, okay, because this is important. All right, so we are talking about algebra, and our first equation was a radical equation, like 1 over the square root of x is equal to 1 half. Now, this is a radical equation because it has a square root or a radical sign. Now, there's other types of equations in algebra, like this type of equation right here. Now, this is a polynomial equation. This is not a polynomial equation. Matter of fact, this is a degree two polynomial equation, uh, otherwise known as a quadratic equation. Now, there's something called the fundamental theorem of algebra. You don't need to remember that. But uh, effectively, what the fundamental theorem of algebra states is that when you have a polynomial equation, the degree or the highest power of that polynomial is how many solutions the equation will have. So in a quadratic equation, you will always have two solutions because it is de a degree two polynomial. All right, so uh, some of you might be saying, boy, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you're really kind of getting into the square root stuff. Well, indeed I am because this is extremely important for you to understand. All right, so here is a basic quadratic equation. We have x squared is equal to 4. So how do we solve for x? Well, all we need to do is uh, take the square root of both sides. So when we take the square root of x squared, we have x. And when we take the square root of 4, this is where we're going to uh, apply this positive and negative 2 because uh, these are what we call roots or zeros, all right? So these are our two specific uh, solutions to this polynomial equation. One is 2 and the other solution is negative 2, okay? And we can prove this by checking these solutions into the original equation. All right, so here's x is equal to 2 and x is equal to negative 2. So let's plug in each of these uh, solutions into the original equation. So when we plug in x is, equal, x is equal to 2 here, okay, we have 2 squared, which of course is 4, 4 is equal to 4. And when we plug in negative 2 into x squared is equal to 4, we get negative 2 squared, which is negative 2 times negative 2, which is a positive 4. So positive 4 is equal to positive 4. These are both uh, two good solutions. All right, so this is when you need to use the positive and negative uh, of a uh, square root, okay? It's when you are uh, taking the square root in terms of solving like a polynomial equation. All right, now, if you understand this and you plan on taking algebra, or maybe you are taking algebra, this is really going to help you out because uh, this, again, is a very, very, uh, you know, sort, it's, a, it's a source of confusion, even for strong math students. They'll end up like, you know, you know, hey, you know, I am totally confused, Mr. Math Man. I'm doing everything right. 
uh, and they are, okay, but they're just not uh, taking the principal square roots when they're solving or when they're checking for solutions in certain types of equations. All right, so hopefully this little video helps you out, and if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.